And what's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning back into the channel. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Gary Demar and some of his issues, issues that I'm seeing on Facebook. Issues that aren't issues because his issues are that he studies the Bible and people don't like it. If you're a guy and you're watching this and you're looking for a woman to marry, find you a woman that cares about you as much as people on Facebook care about Gary Demar's eschatology. That simple. Uh, a couple questions have been asked of Gary Demar, and people are saying that the answers are vague and are not clear. And these questions are specifically coming from Ken Gentry, which it's ironic that Ken Gentry is the one that's asking some of these questions and trying to pin Gary Demar on not answering, since Ken Gentry has dodged questions from full preterists for a very long time, uh, Mike Sullivan included. If you'll go read some of the Facebook stuff, he won't answer any of Sullivan's questions. Um, the questions re uh, revolve around the resurrection of the dead and the return of Christ. And really what they're trying to pin DeMar on is that his, his views are inconsistent with the Westminster Confession of Faith. And this really is a lot of these WCF guys who are trying to pin him. And, and all I think DeMar's done and that Mike Sullivan have done is point out, well, some of you partial preterist guys, you're taking views on um, – passages of scripture that go against the Westminster Confession of Faith too. So which one is it? Uh, I mean, is there just a certain standard that says you're allowed to not believe, you're allowed to disagree with the with the confession at this place, but you're not allowed to uh, disagree with the confession at this other juncture? If you've noticed today, I think it was today or yesterday, Gary DeMar posted something on 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I think he also just posted something on 1 Corinthians 15. But in the 1 Corinthians 11, I think it was 11.26, where he talks about doing this, taking communion until I come. And he didn't. he's not saying that we shouldn't take communion today. He never said that. All he was doing was making the case that in 1 Corinthians 11.26, do this until I come, was a reference point to 80.70. And he's taken a lot of heat uh, on it, you know, from certain people on there, on that specific post. But nobody's dealing with exegetical responses they're not dealing with the original post they're um because they know a lot of these guys are seeing they're saying hey when you know this coming until this end what end is this and they're recognizing oh this is talking about the same as the rest of first corinthians and the new testament that this is talking about the end of the old covenant age now we took communion yesterday at my church so i'm not you know telling you to take communion don't take communion because there are people on both sides of the camp i know um Plenty of preterist churches that take it every week, and plenty of churches that, um, you know, plenty of people who are preterist who say, no, nah, we we shouldn't we shouldn't take it at this point. It's not that's not my that's not my point of making this video. Here's the point of making this video. If somebody like Gary Demar, who's been studying eschatology longer than people like me have been alive, if he is over seventy years old, and he's still saying, you know what, look, I got to study. I'm still studying. I still have some things that I'm I'm working through. And all he's doing is, is telling other people, saying, look, we might need to revisit some things like Revelation 20. We might need to revisit some of these uh, thoughts and ideas that we had on some of these scriptures. Uh, all, all he's doing is encouraging people to study and to study the scriptures. And he's, you know, he's getting blasted for his associations. He was on uh, the Burrows of Berea podcast. Shout out to Rick Welch and those guys. Go check them out. Um you know, and everybody on the Burrows of Berea podcast, they're not even all preterist. Uh, I mean, they're not even all. There's one person on there who's an atheist, they're, I, and they're just trying to take shots at Gary Demar. I, I don't understand how we can value somebody for uh, so long. You buy all of his books, you listen to his tapes, you you know, you listen to his videos, you follow his material, you support American Vision, and then he begins to examine some things further. And everybody wants to try to crucify him. I don't get it at all. I don't think what you're doing is fair. I don't think you care about Gary Demar. I really don't. I, I just think you're looking for a reason to ostracize somebody. If you are, engage him in the text. Uh, because I'm not seeing a whole lot of that. He's speaking at uh, he's speaking at the Berean Bible Conference in April. at That's hosted by David Curtis and those guys. And he's getting some heat over that. He's a grown man. He can associate with who he wants to associate with. <laughs> and he don't need anybody on Facebook's permission to do it. So um, Ken Gentry is the one that's stirring a lot of it. He's asking those questions about the resurrection. 
and I don't know what the beef is. I guess the post-millennial partial predators can't feel like they're losing Gary DeMar, and they don't want that to happen. I understand. He's been in that camp for a long time. But uh, if you remember, I guess it was David Chilton who made a transition there toward the end of his life. And, uh, you know, it cost him a little bit. When you teach the Bible, it's going to cost you. And I, I don't think – any of these guys are saying, you know, well, we don't value the scholarship that came before us. I value the scholarship that came before us. I read it every week when I'm preparing a sermon or to teach Sunday school or a class, whatever it is. Um, these guys are saying the same thing. We value that scholarship, but we're just examining the scriptures and studying it. I come from a Southern Baptist background. I admit that my Southern Baptist background is not as creedal as a lot of the Presbyterian background are and i admit that a lot of the southern baptist background is not as it's not as deep as some of the presbyterian background i i admit that i give it to you i came across james jordan and james jordan radically rocked my world i read through new eyes and he changed the way i thought about biblical symbolism and typology and kind of the hermeneutic for doing so and just kind of seeing things at a you know a bigger scheme and a bigger picture and i'm very appreciative of it and some of you very guys who are hammering Gary DeMar over this, um, he's taught you so much about the Bible, and here you are trying to stab him in the back. I, I don't get it. Uh, if you if you want to disagree with him, that that's fine. Disagree with him, but show some exegetical proof as to why you're doing so. And that's just not the case that's happening um, on these forums. I don't know Gary DeMar, and I don't know Ken Gentry, but that's what the riff's about his associations with uh, some full preterists and you know he's i think he's he's pushing some challenges to some partial preterists and i think it's a good thing uh the, those are issues that i had to deal with and i think all of us if we're being honest that we have to we have to deal with it's really that classical amillennial paradigm versus you know this partial preterist paradigm do we have two separate comings do we have one coming and that's really the, the gist of it. And I think Gary DeMar's pressing those lines, and people don't like it. And I don't think he cares. <laughs> so uh, he's he's going to do what he, what he wants. He's going to study the Bible. And, you know, I, I, I pray to God that he'll just teach what he believes. And, I you know, that I think that's about all we can ask for all of us. And, um, you know, whatever that does to us, then so be it. So the day of Gloria, and we'll teach the book. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Comment down below your thoughts on some of the Gary DeMar stuff that's going on. Um, I'm thankful for him and appreciative. So um, subscribe, comment, like, and we'll see you soon. Hopefully we'll get some more videos coming out towards the end of the week. Um, God bless you and take care.